Hey guys, welcome to Frame Chasers. Uh, I'm gonna do a quick one today uh, because it's something I just remembered while I was overclocking the 4790K um, before I forget. So it's going to be about overclocking your ring uncore or your cache clock. Um, overclocking this one is a bit finicky and hard to tell if you're stable or not. Um, I have here the 4790K PC being captured and I'm just gonna show you a quick trick for you to know whether or not your core, or sorry, your um, cache is gonna be stable or not. So, um, let me show you what to do here. We're gonna do a quick reboot. Um, restart. It's gonna be different for Haswell and Skylake. Um, this is mainly for Intel chips. I'm not sure if it works for AMD ones, but I will test that, test that later. All right, so we're in the BIOS here for the um, 4790K. And you'll see right away the target cache frequency is 4400, right? So where you set that, obviously are these values right here, the minimum and maximum cache ratio. You just set them both to the same value, whatever the max is. That way it just doesn't try to downclock to save power. Um, when when you set your cache to try and downclock, it just creates a lot of instability and it's just not worth it. The, the cache doesn't drain any power anyway. Like, don't even worry about it. Set them both to the max value and then you're good. Um, where you do this... Right here, where are you? Right, CPU cache voltage override. So this value won't be as high as your core because the core obviously was at 4.8 gigahertz. The cache is not gonna go that high on, on Haswell especially. 4.4, 4.5 is the most you're gonna get on the cache. So I already know that 1.3 volts is stable for 4.4 gigahertz on the cache. Let me show you how you test this. The thing about cache clock is even if, like let's say, here I'll show you. Even if I put 5.5 for both of these, it'll still boot and it'll run. Nothing will change. And you actually won't even notice a difference at all. You won't even see, you won't see any blue screens. You won't see any instability. But it it will do funny things like the longer you play, the more jittery it gets. Or maybe once in a while you'll get a hiccup and you won't know why. And it's a lot, the symptoms are very similar to a, uh, too hardcore of a memory overclock. And you'll be sitting there scratching your head for hours on end and it was your cache clock the whole time. So let me show you how I verify this. I'm going to restart and go back into Windows. I'm not going to make any changes. All right, we're back into Windows. What we're going to do for this test is use our friend Fortnite. This game has a very unique start screen and game engine that really taxes the CPU frequency and the latency and the cache as a result. So watch what happens when we launch this. And you have to enable the FPS numbers at the bottom, and I'll show you in a second how to do that. So remember, right now we're at 4.4 cache at 1.3 volts. Uh, should start up any second here. I'm going to sip my coffee. And this trick has saved my ass so many times. When someone will bring their computer over, and then they'll be like, hey, it's just not running right. Do the old Fortnite cache test. And I'm pretty sure like nobody knows about this little trick. It's just like a frame chaser special. All right, let's see this. I'm running this off an external SSD, so it's kind of slow to load, but 
At least that way I can move the games from PC to PC and not have to reinstall them every damn time. Alright, so you go to Battle Royale. And you just want to go to the main screen and they'll throw a bunch of crap at you. No, I don't care about your battle passes, none of that. All right, you want to make sure your resolution is set to, uh, actually doesn't really matter, but I use 1920 by 1080, unlimited frame rate, low settings, and you want to do 100% resolution scale. Scroll down to the bottom here. V-Sync always has to be off so it uncaps the frames, otherwise it'll just match your monitor and won't do anything. Show FPS on. Now, what you're going to see here, actually, this might not even be that stable because it's kind of jittering. But what you're going to see in the FPS numbers here is a down arrow and an up arrow. The up arrow is the current max FPS and the down arrow is the current low one. Yep, see, it's actually not stable right now, which is interesting. It must be because I'm capturing it or something. But... Do you see how the low number is in the 50s and 70s? This is how you know that the memory or cache are missing. It's almost like you can think of it as uh, an engine where if you have the timing out of whack, your engine will just misfire and it'll it'll still run. Like, it just you're going to lose a crap ton of horsepower and then it might, like, stutter and you know misfire and that's exactly what's happening here and uh, for some reason fortnite shows this the best uh so let's go see what's going on all right so we're back in the bios here and i so i thought 44 was actually stable but i guess it's not so what you can actually do is lower this to 43 or up the voltage a little bit every cpu will have a different safe voltage range but what we're going to try here is move this up to 1.32 then we're going to save and exit then all we're going to do is just go right back into fortnite and see if that low number is now much higher so the low number was around uh how do i change this Uh, video capture. Right. There we go. Okay, so what we had was the high number around the 600 mark. And we had the low number in the 10s, 20s, 50s. So it was definitely misfiring. All right, we're back into Windows. Now, back to the Fortnite test. Come on, there we go. I'm trying to work two mice here. My, my hands are like confused. All right, back to Battle Royale, to the main menu settings. Check it out. Now the low number doesn't even go below 500. The high number actually got a little bit faster. Now it's about 650. That's how you know when your cache is undervolted or too high of a clock. Right there. And you're, you're going to be able to feel that when you play the game. It's, it's, ah, man, it's hard to explain, but like, when you're playing a game and you have those little dips in there, like like the cache is misfiring, that it'll really mess you up when you're when you're playing, man. Like you have no idea. But look at that now. 
just from upping the voltage by 0.2. That's all it takes. That's literally all it takes to go from stability to instability. And there are stress testing programs that you can run to try and get the errors out of it. But when it comes to cache or uncore, man, this Fortnite load, like lobby screen is king. It's absolutely king on finding out if your cache is within the right voltage range or not. So let's go back. This works for Skylake as well. Uh, literally any uncore setting. Let's go back and I'm gonna set the cache to 40.5. All right, we're back in the BIOS now. Let's go down, set this to 4.5 on both of them. 45. And just to show my point, we're gonna bring this down just to make sure it fails, just so you can see what, what happens. And 1.275.45. And what you're gonna see with Fortnite, sometimes it'll take a while for the misfires to start happening. That's kind of how it works. It will work fine, and then as the CPU kind of heats up, it'll get worse and worse and worse over time. Uh, that was how I found this out when I was playing, um, what game was it? Uh, Overwatch. Uh, I would play for about an hour or two on my old... Uh, my uh, Skylake system. And then after about an hour or two, I would get like small frame dips and it would just get worse the longer I played. And then I would always forget to just restart my PC to like, to clear it out. And I would get so frustrated that I didn't know what the hell was going on. And then I discovered this little trick and it just, it saved me so many times. You don't even know. Are we booting here or? Oh crap, it might not even be booting now. I think I went a little too far. Oh man. Let me see if I can control or delete this. Aww. Oh man, no. All right, I'll be back. I'm, I gotta hook this up to a monitor for a second and get it back. All right, we're back. So yeah, what happened there was Increasing it to 4.5 and decreasing the voltage to 1.275. It pushed it just far enough where it wasn't able to boot. And then I restarted it a couple of times and then I put it back to 1.3. Uh, the when, when, a, when you get a cache clock error, it won't necessarily blue screen on you. It'll just, it'll just hang. That is the classic sign of a cache overclock failure if it's the core it'll blue screen it will say clock watchdog error or dpc violation or whatever that's how you know it's the core when it's a memory overclock error you'll usually get a memory management one which is self-explanatory but if the computer just straight up freezes and it doesn't do anything usually if you press the reset button and the PC won't reset even like it won't respond to the button itself. That's cash. It's always cash. That's how you, that's how you can tell which one it is. Uh, let's get back into this here. It's actually not as bad as I thought it would be. So our lows are down into the 300s now, which is worse than it was before. But the longer we sit here, the worse it's going to get. See, it's already dipping down to the 100s once in a while. There we go. Just had a 38. So let's let this sit here for a bit. So it gets worse.
There it is. Bam. So that took about... What did that take? That was maybe 45 seconds before I started doing that. So now it's down to the hundreds. So depending on how far away your your cash clock and your voltage is, maybe it might take five minutes, maybe it might take a minute, but man, the Fortnite uh, home screen will always find it. All right, I'm gonna go back and just set this back to what I had it at before. Um, one thing, one last point on this video that I wanna let you guys know. Whenever you're changing something and you're testing it, always do one thing at a time so you know that whatever the hell you changed last was what was... What, what, ugh, that's a tongue twister. So that you know whatever you did last, what... Holy crap. <laughs> you know that what you did last was what was the thing that you did wrong. There we go. All right. Whew. That was rough. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to set the cache to 4.4. Then I'm going to set the ring back actually to 1.32 because that's where we found was the stable spot, right? Remember the first time we did it? Um, so when you're actually... Okay, so one last thing here, one last thing. When you're actually doing your memory timing overclocks, you also want to do these one, one at a time too because they can kind of have the same symptoms in the, in the Fortnite test. So let's say it's a little bit easier with these ones though, because if you go down to like, let's say CL 10, it just won't boot. You know what I mean? Like it'll have a, um, it'll have more of a black and white threshold of passing and failure rather when the, the cash will have a far greater area of gray where it'll kind of work, but kind of not work. Right. But same thing. So when you're doing your memory overclocks, change one timing at a time, go back into Fortnite, check it for five minutes, and make sure there's no weird ass dips or anything like that, right? Um, let's see here, what did I do? 4.4 and 1.32. Yeah. And that is pretty much it for this video. Um, how do I summarize this? Always do one setting at a time. Always do at least five minutes of the Fortnite test. Uh, remember to set it at 1080p low, or you can go even lower if you want. But um, the chances of a miss are kind of higher when you're doing 720p. Even if it's 100% stable, you'll still see misses because the CPU just can't keep up with it. So 1080p low is the sweet spot that I found for like most CPUs, pretty much all of them. Um... That's pretty much it, I think. Go up in small increments, down in small increments. Um, that's pretty much how you know if your cache is good or not. And if your computer is not running properly or something feels off, go just do the run the Fortnite test, man. See what's up. If it's dipping down, then, then go back into your BIOS and change something. All right. All right, guys, if you found this information useful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and do all that YouTube stuff. Uh, my new goal is to get 100 subscribers by the end of July. Um, tell your friends about the info that you found today. Um, help them out with their computers with the Fortnite test. And hope to see you guys next time. See you later.